Hello, and welcome to another Digital Differential Equations lecture video for Salt Lake Community College. In this video, we are going to be going through Chapter 4.5 and looking at the method of variation of parameters. In Chapter 4.5, we introduce an alternate method for finding solutions to non-homogeneous differential equations when the method of undetermined coefficients does not apply. It is not restricted to the case of constant coefficients and includes a broader class of forcing functions. Specifically, the method of variation of parameters says if you're given a second order linear differential equation of the form y double prime plus p of t y prime plus q of t y equals f of t, that we will first determine two linearly independent solutions y1 and y2 of the corresponding homogeneous equation which again is created by forcing the right hand side to equal zero. And then write the homogeneous solution using the superposition principle as C1Y1 plus C2Y2. Thus far, it, this agrees with the method of undetermined coefficients. To find a particular solution for the non-homogeneous DE, we are going to write a system of equations for the variables B1 prime and V2 prime. Now, I do develop this system of equations completely at the end of our guided lecture notes in chapter 4.5. But for simplicity of just presenting the method, I'm just going to write the given system of equations that we will develop later on. Now this system of equations can be rewritten in the matrix form, which you'll recall now looks like AX equals B, which we can solve by applying Kramer's rule. Now recall Kramer's rule says each individual solution can be found one at a time by looking at the quotient of two determinants. The upper determinant on V1 prime is obtained by replacing the first co column of your matrix A with your right hand B vector. dividing by the determinant of our original matrix A. Similarly, V2 prime is obtained by looking at the quotient of two determinants, where we replace the second column of A with our B vector. And divide by the original determinant of our coefficient matrix A. When writing this, we should observe that our denominator is actually the Ronskian of Y1 and Y2. This allows us to write expressions for V1 and V2 prime in the simplest form as negative Y2 times your forcing function divided by your Ronskian and Y1 times your forcing function divided by your Ronskian. Again, this is just the simplest way of us writing our uh, system of equations or the solution to our system of equations for V1 prime and V2 prime. Afterwards, we will integrate the results of step two to find V1 and V2 specifically, which will allow us to write the particular solution to the non-homogeneous DE as a linear combination of V1Y1 
times v2, y2, where the y1 and the y2 are from our homogeneous solution, and the v1 and the v2 we found in step three. We can then write our general solution using the non-homogeneous principle as the sum of the homogeneous solution and our particular solution. If you're given an IVP, we'll solve for the constant C1 and C2 last. Now again, I do want to remind you that the derivation of the method of variation of parameters is given at the end of chapter 4.5 guided lecture notes. And this is a beautiful combination of the mathematics we have learned thus far in our course. So it's something I definitely think you should look at later on. However, right now I want to focus on just being able to use this method for solving some uh, second order linear non-homogeneous differential equations. So let's look at our first example. And let's find the general solution to this differential equation. One of the first things you should notice is as a right hand side of our DE, secant of t is not one of the forcing functions that we can use with the method of undetermined coefficients. So we're kind of forced to use an alternate method here. But let's just make that note so we can remember this later. This is not an appropriate function for the method of undetermined coefficients. So following our method, step one is we first look for our homogeneous solutions. Remember looking for the homogeneous solutions, we force this to be a homogeneous differential equation by making the right hand side zero, which I like solving using the characteristic polynomial. So now let's write our quadratic in the variable r as r squared plus one. Now a common mistake that students make right here is they write r squared plus r. And remember you only replace the derivative terms with the variable r. So if I could emphasize this more, really look closely at this step. This is right here, this is your i. This is the best eye I can draw. This has to be r squared plus one equals zero. Now we'll probably move the one to the other side of our equal sign and write this as r squared equals negative one or write it as r is equal to plus or minus the square root of negative one, which we think of as plus or minus i. And we get complex roots to our characteristic equation. Here you wanna remember that for co the complex characteristic root case, we have to find what alpha and beta are. Remember, this tells us our homogeneous solution is going to look like e to the alpha t c1 cosine beta t plus c2 sine beta t. So we know to alpha and beta. So remember alpha, this is your real part, which is zero
because there is no real part, plus or minus one times i. So alpha is equal to zero, beta is equal to one. And since alpha is equal to zero, we have e to the alpha t is e to the zero t ends up just being one. This allows us to write our homogeneous solution as C1 cosine beta t, or cosine just one t, plus C2 sine beta t, or just t in this case. And this is our homogeneous solution for our differential equation. Okay. Now we have to look for our non-homogeneous solution. Now to find our non-homogeneous solution, I want to jump back to the form that we're going to look at. So remember, to solve the non-homogeneous system, we need to find expressions for v1 prime and v2 prime. And I'm going to use our shortcut method for doing that. So here we're going to have v1 prime is going to be the negative of y2 times your forcing function divided by the Ronskian of y1 and y2 and v2 prime is going to be y1 times your forcing function divided by the Ronskian of y1 and y2. Now notice that both of these are going to require the Ronskian, so let's go figure out what that is first. So here, the Ronskian. Uh, our two y1 and y2 is going to be cosine of t and sine of t. And remember this is going to be a determinant that's created by writing our given functions on the first line of our matrix and the derivatives of those terms on the second line. Remember, we're taking the determinant of a two by two matrix. You look at the product of the main diagonal minus the product of the off diagonal. So cosine times cosine would be cosine squared of t minus the product of the off diagonal is negative sine squared of t but this is really just cosine squared of t plus sine squared of t, which we know is to be one by our Pythagorean identity. So what this tells us is that the denominators in both of our expressions is gonna be one. So V1 prime is gonna be negative of Y2, which is sine of t, times our forcing function, which was secant of t, divided by our Ron scheme, which ends up just being one. That's v1 prime. And v2 prime is gonna be y1 times our forcing function, so cosine of t, times secant of t, divided by one. 
Now I want to solve each of these, but I'm gonna do them one at a time just for simplicity. So let's focus on V1 prime first. So once I write expression for V1 prime, I want to integrate both sides to find an expression for just V1. Of course, on the left, this is just gonna be V1 equals. Now the right-hand side. Remember that secant of T, that's really one over cosine of T. So this is really sine of T times cos one over cosine. And I'm gonna write that as a fraction. Now, if you're, if you're recalling, sine of t over cosine of t is really tangent. And that's true, I could write this as tangent, but that's gonna make the integration a little bit harder. Here, I'm gonna leave it in this form because I want to do a u substitution to find this antiderivative. And I'm gonna let u equal cosine of t, the term in the denominator. Because then du is gonna be negative sine of t dt, which you'll notice matches the remainder of our integrand perfectly. Which tells me I can now write v1 as the integral of, well, the, the u is going to be in the denominator, and the negative sine of t dt is going to be du. which you should recognize as the natural log of the absolute value of u. Now remember with these uh, u substitutions, we always have to rewrite in terms of our original variable again, which tells us v1 is really gonna be the natural log of the absolute value of cosine of t. And this is what v1 is in our particular solution. Okay, now we're gonna go find V2. So again, we have to integrate both sides of our equation. And this will give us V2 is really the integral of cosine of T times secant, but remember secant is one over cosine dt. But notice that these cosines are gonna cancel. So we end up getting just v2 is the integral of one dt, which tells us v2 is just t. This allows us to now say that the solution to the non-homogeneous DE YP is gonna be V1 Y1 plus V2 Y2 which gives us the natural log of the cosine of t times our y1, which was, uh, well, what was y1? y1 was cosine of t. So times cosine of t plus v2, which is just t times y2, which was sine of t. So this is our particular solution to the non-homogeneous equation. Which now allows us to write our general solution to the DE as y of t 
C1 cosine of T, C2 sine of T, plus, I'm going to change the order of these two terms, write it as cosine of T times the natural log of the absolute value of cosine of T plus T sine T. This is our general solution to the differential equation. Okay, I hope this makes sense. Uh, let's try another example. I'm gonna guide you on the next example, but I'm gonna ask you to do parts of it on your own. Let's find the general solution to this DE. So first thing I'm gonna ask you to do is to maybe pause the video and go find your homogeneous solution. And then after you found your homogeneous solution, maybe unpause the video and let's make sure we get the same result there. So I'll see you back here in a moment. Okay, let's see how we did. So for your homogeneous DE, I hope you rewrote this as y double prime minus 2y prime plus y equals zero, which I can solve by using the characteristic equation. which we should recognize is factorable as r minus one times r minus one. This gives us uh, a single repeated root to the characteristic equation of just one. And because we only had one root to the characteristic equation, we want to remember that our homogeneous solution now has to look like C1e to the t, plus C2 T E to the T. This is our homogeneous solution. Okay, now we have to go find our non-homogeneous solution to the differential equation. Now this is where I'd like to pause the video again and give you a moment to work on this on your own. But you probably, the way I'm gonna do this so, so that our methods are gonna match is I'm first gonna go and find the Ronskian of our two functions. And then I'm gonna write the solution for yp. So if you could, Pause the video now again and go ahead and write as far as your particular solution to the DE. I'll see you in a moment. Okay, let's see how you did. So for our Ronskian, again, we have to write this as a determinant of a square matrix created by putting our two given functions on the top line of our matrix and the derivatives on the bottom line. Now, a common mistake that students make here is not to re notice this is a product rule. So if we were thinking of this as a product rule, it's the derivative of the first, derivative of the first is just one times the second regular, plus by the product rule, the derivative of the second, which is e to the t times the first, but I'm gonna write it as t e to the t, just so I can keep the order of the terms the same. And remember now the determinant of this matrix, it's gonna be the product of your main diagonal minus the product of your off diagonal, which is gonna be e to the t times e to the t plus t e to the t minus your off diagonal, which is e to the t times t e to the t. Now 
depending on how you did your algebra, you probably distributed the e to the t to get e to the 2t plus t e to the 2t minus t e to the 2t. Notice that these second and third terms cancel. And so the Ronskian is just e to the 2t. And now I want to write expressions for v1 prime and v2 prime. Now recall v1 prime, the form here is going to be the negative of y2 times your forcing function divided by your Ronskian of y1 and y2. which for us is going to look like the negative of y2, which would be t e to the t times our forcing function, which was e to the t divided by t to the fourth, divided by our Ronskin, which was e to the 2t. I'm going to have to simplify this, but I want to write an expression for v2 prime first. So remember, v2 prime is going to be y1. Remember, the negative is only on this first one. This is positive y1 times our forcing function divided by the Ronskian of y1 and y2, which is going to look like e to the t times our forcing function e to the t divided by t to the fourth divided by e to the 2t. Now I have to solve both of these but I'm going to focus on just v1 prime first. So focusing on v1 prime Let's see what we can simplify. I think here you want to notice that all of these exponentials cancel. This e to the t times this e to the t is e to the 2t, which will cancel with the e to the 2t in the denominator. This t divided by t to the fourth, those are also going to simplify. So I think this allows me to say that if I were to integrate both sides, I should be able to say then that v1 has to be the integral of negative 1 over t cubed dt. Of course, when I'm doing this antiderivative, I want to think of this as negative t to the negative 3. So that when I use the power rule, I'm going to get, let's see, add 1 to your exponent to get t to the negative 2. Divide by your new exponent, which I think makes this be a 1 half. which I would like to write as 1 over 2t squared. This is what v1 is. Okay, let's look at v2 now. And again, I want to see what cancels here. Let's look at v2 and see what cancels. So again, I have e to the t times e to the t is e to the 2t, which will cancel with the e to the 2t that's in your denominator. 
and then we're going to choose to integrate both sides. And I think our integral ends up looking like v2 is the integral of 1 over t to the fourth dt. Which in terms of doing our antiderivative, I want to think of this as t to the negative 4. I think this will give us v2 is equal. The antiderivative t to the negative 4 is going to be t to the negative 3. And then divide by your new exponent puts a negative 1 third as a coefficient. Which if I simplify this, I think I can write it as negative 1 over 3t cubed. And this is what v2 is in our expression. This allows us to now write yp. Remember yp is going to be v1y1. So 1 over 2t squared times our y1, which was e to the t. plus v2, so that's going to be negative, minus 1 over 3t cubed times y2, which was t e to the t. And what I'd like you to see is that some of this stuff still cancels. For example, this t cancels with one of those and leaves a t squared in your denominator. So I think this actually looks like, and both these have a common factor of e to the t, so maybe we can write this as 1 over 2t squared minus 1 over 3t squared times e to the t. I think you can see that, actually, you can probably combine these two fractions together by getting a common denominator. So 1 half t squared minus 1 third over t squared. I think this will give you 1 over 6 t squared. Times e to the t. This is what your particular solution is going to look like if you combine similar terms. Which allows us now to write our general solution as y of t. It's the homogeneous solution, c1e to the t plus c2te to the t plus your particular solution to the non-homogeneous equation, which is 1 over 6t squared times e to the t. And this is your general solution. Okay, I have one more example for us to look at. Now in this one they tell us uh, to find the general solution to the DE if you are already given two homogeneous solutions to the DE. Now the reason that they're doing this is we, well, well this differential equation does not have constant coefficients. We have variable coefficients now. And we have not learned how to solve second order linear DEs with variable coefficients yet. This comes later. So for this question, they are giving us the two homogeneous solutions. So we want to find the general solution, but let's first verify that these are in fact homogeneous solutions. So let's do part A first. And let's look at y1. If y1 is a homogeneous solution, it must satisfy the equation 
and give us back zero on the right hand side. So let's evaluate our second order DE at the proposed solution of just T. So it'll be T squared times our second derivative minus three T times our first derivative plus three times our function. And we're asking, is this gonna equal zero when we evaluate this all at T? So let's simplify this, and I'm gonna work from right to left. Of course, three T is just three T, we'll leave that one there. Now looking at the middle term, the derivative of T is just one. So this is gonna be minus three T times one. And if the first derivative is just one, then the second derivative of t, the first derivative of t is one, then the second derivative would take another derivative of that. The second derivative would have to be zero so that this term all goes away. So notice that this would be negative three t, this is gonna plus three t, that this will end up being zero and so that y1 is a homogeneous solution. Let's do the same thing for y2. We're gonna have t squared times our second derivative minus three t times the first derivative plus three times the original function and again, we're asking, will this equal zero? When we plug in our proposed solution of t cubed. So we're asking, is t cubed a homogeneous solution? Will it produce zero? So our last term the three T cubed, that's not gonna change. There's no derivatives there. So this is just three times T cubed. Uh, our middle term, well, we'll have to take one derivative there. So this will be negative three T times three T squared when you take one derivative. And now our first term, we have to take two derivatives. So this will be t squared. And if the first derivative of t cubed is three t squared, then the next derivative is gonna be six t. Now I think if you multiply this out, this is gonna be six t cubed minus nine t cubed plus three t cubed, which I believe all of that does cancel and does give zero back. So that means this one is also a homogeneous solution. Okay, now let's go to part B. Let's look for our non-homogeneous solution using the variation of parameters technique. And I find it easier to just look for the Ronskian first. So let's look for the Ronskian of t and t cubed, which we know is gonna be a determinant created by making the first row of this matrix be the original variables, original functions, and the second row being the derivatives of these. Now remember the determinant is the product of the main diagonal minus the off diagonal. 
So I think this is going to be 3t cubed minus t cubed, which is just 2t cubed. Here's our wrong scheme that we're going to need. Now I want to write expressions for v1 prime and v2 prime. And this is my, where you, maybe where you want to pause the video again and see if you can write these two expressions on your own. So pause your video and I'll see you back here in a moment. Okay, let's see how you did. Here v1 prime is going to be the opposite of your second function, your opposite of y2, so negative t cubed times your forcing function, which was 4t to the 7th, divided by your Ronskian, 2t cubed. And v2 prime is going to be your first function, just t, times your forcing function, 4t to the 7th, divided by your Ronskian. I now want to integrate both sides and make some simplifications. So this tells me V1 is going to be, now if we simplify this right hand side, I think you're going to have T cubed times T to the 7th is T to the 10th divided by T cubed. You got to divide your coefficients too. I think this should be the integral of negative 2t to the seventh dt. I'm going to get to v2 in a moment. I'm just going to continue to work v1 for, for now. So I think this will give us v1. Your antiderivative will be t to the eighth. Divide by your new exponent makes this be negative 1 fourth. So this is our expression for V1. For V2, we're going to have, this going to be T times T to the 7th is T to the 8th, divided by T cubed is T to the 5th. I think this is going to be 2T to the 5th dt. I'm going to integrate by adding 1 to your exponent to get t to the 6th. Divide by your new exponent, so 2 divided by 6, I'll write that as 1 third. So 1 third t to the 6th. Now this should give us enough to write our particular solution. yp. Right. Yp is v1, so negative 1 fourth t to the 8th, times our first y1. Oh. Yeah, I got that right. Times our first y1, which was just t, plus v2, which is 1 third t to the 6th, times our y2, which was t cubed. I think if we simplify this, I can write it as negative 1 fourth t to the ninth plus 1 third t to the ninth. And if we add, get common denominators and add these together, I think you should get 1 twelfth t to the ninth. This is our particular solution to the non-homogeneous equation. This doesn't give us everything. We need to write our general solution. Y of t is c1 t plus c2 t cubed, so our homogeneous solution, plus our non-homogeneous solution. 
making sure I identify that this portion is yh and this portion is yp. Okay. I hope this gives you enough examples to get started on your homework. I have provided some additional resource videos in Canvas in your 4.5 module, but I hope this gives you enough and this is very helpful. I'm going to make one more video for this section to be able to go through uh, the derivation of the variation of parameters, but I'll do that in our next video. I hope this is helpful and I'll see you then.